Wow, have you seen such a beautiful machine ever in your whole life? This has to take the price. This is a Biogram 1200 from 1969 and it's made by the famous almost rock star company Bang & Olufsen who actually inspired Apple when they made the iPhone or was it the iPod? I don't remember. I read something about that. They have this legendary design status in the business and um, everything they make is pretty cool looking. Some say it's not the best sound quality. Some say it is. They have uh, speakers for um, like seventy, eighty thousand dollars I guess. It's an um, amazing product I guess. Anyways, this one needs to be um, lubed up. We need to take it apart. I just took off the brass top from the motor here. It has a cone-shaped um, way of uh, providing different speed to the rubber-coated wheel that you could see there up to the left. And let's open this record player up. You can see we have um, the bottom of the motor there to the left and we have a voltage selector and we have actually a slot for uh, preamp and preamp is a way to um, amplify the sound signal coming from the record player itself I don't have anything in this slot so I have to leave it up to the stereo to um, amplify the phono signal itself but Anyway, you could put in um, a small circuit board there, I guess. Because this machine do not have any PCBs in it. So it cannot be a circuit board. It has to be some kind of um, capacitors or something. I don't know. Anyway, inside here we can see there is no plastic almost. And um, it can be a bit deadly actually working on these old machines. You have to be very careful because you're always connected to the mains more or less. So just unplug it. And everything is in... Seems to be in perfect condition. Lots of mechanical things going on here. And we need to investigate everything before we do something stupid. And definitely we are not going to break anything or... I mean... Because there can be some fragile parts here. If we break them, we're not going to find them, so... You can see the little cog there to the left. That's actually to adjust the speed. And I guess it's done by modifying the friction from the rubber wheel to the um, brass top of the motor. The motor is spinning, but it's very slow, so we need to take it apart. And I really, really hope, and let's keep our fingers crossed, that this motor is okay. Because I'm not going to find any, and if I do, I could just buy... I mean, I, could, I, I, I might as well buy a new 1200, because it's going to be that expensive. And of course, a record player is um, spinning your vinyl records at the correct speed, at the correct RPM. And we have a needle on the pickup arm that actually travels across one big track from the beginning to the end. And uh, as the needle is moving up and down in a um, magnetic field, I guess, it creates these uh, signals, these currents, that uh, then later on will be amplified by the stereo. And if you put your ear close to the needle, you can actually hear the sound without any amplification and the correct way to loop these um, machines is to have something called I think it was called white lithium lubrication or something it's like a spray you spray it and when it comes to with, in contact with with another material it will become this uh, kind of very luby loop and we need to remove all the dust in here and 
the old lube is probably like um, glue right now so we have to remove every trace of that and be very very careful and then put it all back together and pray that this works because if it works I will do a follow-up video where we will try to uh, make it run the exact RPM if possible and um, we can maybe play, play a bit of a record hope we don't get sued by anybody I have a um, RPM meter somewhere it's like a laser thing that you point to a small piece of tape that is uh, reflective and you can count all the um, RPM that is on, on, on that uh, thing that you're measuring there's also an app that can measure RPM so we can test both and see if we can get close and this is the bottom or top if you want and there is a brass bearing in here it's just a small brass rounded brass um, thingy with a hole in the middle for the shaft of the um, rotor and it can balance it because it can go in any direction it's not fixed and spin and let the rotor spin inside as well and this is plastic we have to be careful there is some old lube here and there we go and you can see there is a um, small plate here holding the bearing a very simple construction but it's I guess very hard to find a substitute for this and underneath here is a spring loaded brick to keep everything in place and surrounding the brass there is some kind of spongy thing I guess it's made to keep the lube going on I don't know or keeping dust out maybe and the rotor looks great maybe some dust here and there but this will be it's a good thing that it's not burnt or anything and this is the housing of the engine the motor I mean can you say engine when it's electric electrical engine steam engine diesel engine gasoline engine electrical engine but usually you say electrical motor right anyway And you can see the mains going in there without ground. Very simple design again. And that's another brass bearing underneath or above. see if it spins it looks like almost no it's not spinning good it should be spinning like a fidget spinner if you don't know what that is ask your kids or a younger person Do you see the rubber wheel there? That's a 
coating of rubber and I don't know if you can change that or substitute with something else. So I'm not going to mess with that because if I touch it too much maybe it will fall off or something. And uh, lots of springs here, lots of tension. that a little bit more now it's uh, too old the lube has actually start to add too much friction to this bearing now I have to remove a lot of things to lift the top of that bearing hmm. I hope this is not some kind of uh, device where you have to be careful with uh, how you how many turns you do on the bolts and things like that that is like adjusted but it looks like it's just more or less pretty easy to remove And there we go, just one spring left and we can open that thing up. There's a plastic wheel there, but it's just keeping like a slot for the metal plate there. Easy peasy. And the same construction here. You have that sponge thing underneath here, I guess. If you understand why there's a sponge there, just write a comment to this video, please, because I really want to know. Is it to collect the lube somehow, or is it to collect stuff that falls off the bearing or to uh, block dust from the outside to get in. It's green. Ugh. But that's the brass, right? Maybe it's some kind of poison. Hopefully this will be sufficient. I can already... Maybe it's better that way. I can already feel that it's... Uh, there's a, no friction almost here anymore. Try it out. Yeah, you see the difference? Ooh. Oops, I think I broke it. Almost broke it. Let's not try that again. And let's put everything back together again.
Well, they had a lot of space inside this box anyway to do something. And um, this is not a fully automatic record player. It just lifts the pickup arm when it reaches the end of the record and turns the record player off. However, when you start, it's actually going to put your pickup in the right position, depending uh, um, if you have selected the right size of the record. You have like three different sizes to select from. So if you put in the wrong size, I guess you can break the needle. And it has two speeds, of course. And this version also had a more spring loaded protection from, uh, I mean, the vibration that can be in a room. If you're dancing to your new, I don't know, if you, <laughs> you're playing Nirvana or something and you want to headbang a little bit, then there will be vibration in the floor that will travel up to the record player and it might skip a bit. So this has some degree of um, prevention from that um, kind of disturbance since it's all like kind of uh, hanging in springs. I don't know how sensitive uh, those first record, pl record players were, were for dancing and or if you made some noise. Would they skip easy? I don't know. You tell me. Leave a comment. Okay, so we're back on the top here again. We have the brass um, cone-shaped thingy in place there. Next to the rubber wheel. And let's just try to turn it on. And you can see it's spinning pretty good now. Just by the friction. And that's the slowest speed. The 30, uh, 33 and the 45. This is the fastest one. So I think we have succeeded in fixing the engine actually guys. That's really really good because otherwise I would just I don't know give this away or something. I don't know if I should lube up the center spinner here. It feels pretty good. Nah, I just leave it. Now we have somehow we have to put on the belt here. I have no idea how to do it. I didn't find any guide on the internet for this version of um, the biogram. So I'm going to try. Maybe we can start by just it would be most logical to kind of thread it on like this and then maybe keep it under tension and then we try to no. Oh, come on. There probably is a way to do this really simply, but I I'm going to try what what else can I do? This is so annoying trying to uh, get it around this heavy plate see that's why you would get if you get a new record player you should get those techniques direct drive DJ DJ type of record players that has a strobe light by the side and you will always know that you have the right RPM because you can set the RPM by a um, uh, device on the right there. I remember these because I had one of those and I'm I miss it man. So good. But this looks uh, so cool so we have to somehow make this work and if you're laughing now I'm happy. Or if you know how to do this the correct way please let me know. I will be very thankful.
What the hell? Oh, come on. Maybe I have to put it on the off position there, so we have more tension. I could just cut here and make you think that I nailed it on the first attempt. But why would I do that? This is much more annoying for everybody. And now it looks like I actually have it. Maybe, yeah, I think we have it. If I just can. Yeah, I can feel it, it's there. We finally succeeded. So that's how you do it. That's one way of doing it. Probably not the right way. Put it in the off position so you have more tension. Keep the tension and uh, get it round the plate. And let's screw the plate back in place as well. First I'm going to test if I'm right. Yeah. It's spinning and it's spinning fast, you see? Man. That's beautiful, huh? We are such a pros. We are such a gang of pros. Retrofam, professional fixers. And now we need some um, music, please. Because I'm gonna put this back on very fast. And this is the pickup needle. I'm really hoping that it works because it's very expensive. And they don't make them anymore. They should make some new versions of these that one pickup who fits them all, one pickup to rule them all with like an Arduino inside <laughs> or something like that that can just, you know, fix everything. You could go and um, make one of those projects where you, where you ask for money for those things. And I think someone would pay. I think lots of people would pay. Okay, do you see? It actually goes to the right position and it will lower itself with the beauty of all the mechanics inside. No PCBs, nothing like that. No computers. And it's playing my Fleetwood Mac album. The most scratched up album I have just to test and I can still I can hear the music if I put the, my ear close to the needle so we are good and I will post a follow-up to this video and please like and subscribe if you're new welcome there's a lot of videos here for you different topics different machines I try to fix everything hope you're happy I love you all And good night.